So what I want to talk about in this one is these shocks. So these are rough country shocks. These are what I bought originally. They're uh, four inch, you know, I don't know what they are, but look, this is pretty typical quality for, for rough country. Now these shocks are about, I don't know, let's say they probably have 60 miles on them. Most of it's just wheeling, so that one's totally blown. And then we also have the, the fronts here. These ones are also completely blown out. It's not even worth it. So, what I've been working on lately is trying to mount some better shocks. I did a lot of research, talked to a lot of people, and what I found out is that what I needed, I think what I needed, is a 255-70 valve, and that's what these are. 5165s. These are 14s. Now, I bought these because uh, I needed something to work on, right? I wanted something something else. I mean, because if you've been following along with this whole project, you know that none of this is normal. This is all... Yeah, well, you know. So these are 14s. So the problem I ran into here is since I didn't do any actual measuring or anything, this uh, triangulated four link not only does it go up and down but it also turns a little bit it toes in and toes out as the suspension comes down and so my shock mounts are on the outside of where the link is so as this goes up and down it actually pivots like this and like this so what i tried to do was uh lots of different things so i ended up damaging this spring perch here and had to weld in some of these plates to reinforce this and I'm going to put a tie that goes all the way across so the issue here is that so this is where the stock shock mounts and the problem is either the shock body becomes too long and it stuffs in there before the suspension travel goes all the way up or it's not long enough and it's pulling on the shock and before it gets to the the limit strap so i kind of got in this position where you know is either one side or the other there was no real medium ground so what i did was i bought these 5165s to try and alleviate that because i got uh this long shaft and i figured that that was going to be fine to deal with all the the stuff there but the problem then became how do i get those to fit right so it's not going to fit in the standard location and i had to cut some holes in here to try and make some of this stuff work originally i wanted to go through here you know put a tube across and have the sharks go there but the problem is it would have ended up being right in line with that brake clip so that's not going to work so what i'm doing now is since this suspension is going to be bottomed out to the point where the tire is going to come up to here and you say, oh, it could go much higher. Yeah, it can, but as the axle twists and turns, it actually rotates up. So if this side's all the way stuffed and that side's all the way drooped, that tire will actually touch almost, not quite, even though it sits right here at max bump. So there's a, there's a twisting motion there. Twisting and stuffing and bending and twisting. And, you know, it's out of all of the suspension stuff that I built here, this has proven to be the most difficult part. So what I'm doing today is I'm tired of dealing with this. I'm going to take the grinder and I'm going to cut this spot out here and I'm just going to mount this thing in there. It's it's happening today. It's uh it's pulling out because I got other things I need to work on as usual. So what I did in the front is I was basically limited by those rough country shocks and so the rear would still be on the ground while these were six inches off the ground. So I thought well I got to do something about that. So I had a set of 5100s that I got off of another job and so I put the Skyjacker springs out of the TJ in their much higher rate and also I got some extended stops but I had to keep my hockey pucks in there so <clears throat> what I've been able to do with this is get much more out of it much more travel in the front now we're actually pivoting on this joint here which is really bad so that's next on the list to fix but now we got it to the point where both of the front and rear suspension travels are basically even and these shocks gave us another six inches of down travel over the uh the factory uh the factory the rough country things so what was happening here was 
35s were touching, so I had to increase my bumps, which made it to where the shock had about that much more. So this ended up working out almost perfectly because this comes up about three quarters of an inch when that bump stopped contact. So there's still a little bit of wiggle room there. I might end up just putting another hockey puck in there. We'll see. But the problem is, you know, even though you cut all this crap out and mechanically adjust the body, you know, I removed all of this stuff. And, you know, every once in a while, you may get in a situation where you'd still get some touching because of, you know, physics and stuff. So this tire, actually, that actually, it's not, it's not any one of those. It's out there. It's my new spare. Actually got pretty well cut up here because of this joint here. So now the way that this is set up, it actually stops way short of where it's going to touch, which is, you know, I lost some up travel. Not a big deal. I'm gaining protection for the tire, which is much more much more beneficial I think so see what else I got the cover back on I took everything apart and cleaned it all up make sure it was all good in there no chunks no nothing and I also got the 10 factory axles installed so as far as the front goes we're pretty much pretty much done except for the limit straps that's gonna happen and this in the back here 